Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about the popular social text editor, CodePen. We're going to discuss what CodePen is all about, how to create an account, how to create a simple pen using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, how to fork a pen and why that's important, naming and saving your pens, organizing your created pens, and generating a link and sharing your pens. So first off, what is CodePen? Well, CodePen provides a place to build and test front-end code. It's a social text editor, which allows you to build projects directly in the browser and share them immediately with a custom generated link. You can browse through thousands of pens or perform a keyword search to help you narrow down a code snippet to help you in your next project. With the fork option, a logged in user can create a copy of someone else's pen and put his or her own spin on it. As long as you have an internet connection, you'll be able to develop or start new ideas and finish them at a later time. So the first thing you'll need to do is go to codepen.io. And when you get to the site, you'll see a variety of options. On the top right hand corner, go ahead and click on sign up. And you'll have the option of signing up through one of these three social networks or an email address. In this video, we'll be using the email address option. So in here, you'll fill out all your information and then hit submit. And once you hit submit, then we can start letting that magic happen. You have the opportunity of uh, completing some profile information. For now, we can just go ahead and skip through that. And we'll go ahead and skip the tour. And now we'll go ahead and get started on creating our first pen. Now that we're in the pen and your account has been created, uh, you have some options here that we'll go over. Um, yeah, in the settings, you have um, the option of changing out the title. Uh, you have uh, an option to put in a description and then to put in a comma separated set of tags up to five and this helps other users who are searching code pen to possibly locate your pen um, that's that's all hashtag driven then within the html css and javascript you have some preprocessor options and css pretty standard preprocessor options and same thing with JavaScript. There's also an extensive library that you can pull in uh, using a simple search here. If I wanted to pull in particle.js, I could pull that in and it pulls in a CDN to which I can uh, reference in the JavaScript window and I can call uh, the various features through particle.js uh, using their API. Uh, within pen details, again, this is the pen title and the pen description. Uh, privacy settings, some of these settings are specific to uh, a pro account. Behavior, this allows you to save it automatically. Uh, if you don't do this, every time you want to save it, you'll have to manually click the save button. Auto updating preview, if you turn this on, then as you are updating your pen, it will automatically update in the results window. If you turn that off up here, and I'll show you how this works here, you'll see a run button, uh, at which point when you're ready to run your code, uh, then you can, you can click run. And that's a good idea if you're doing something like maybe testing an alert function. And I'll show you an example of that if you are constantly trying to set up an alert uh, and that alert goes off uh, every time you make an update in the browser, it tends to become uh, a bit annoying. And then format on save, uh, when you hit save, it will automatically format uh, all of your code within either HTML, CSS, or your JavaScript. So now let's go ahead and let's do the updating auto preview and we'll turn on format on save uh, within the editor you have code indentation so if you wanted to 
let this mimic the development style you have within VS Code or Sublime Text or Atom, then you can select uh, spaces or tabs, and then you can determine how many spaces or tabs that you want to indent with. Uh, template gives you the option to turn this into a template. Uh, that's something that we'll go over in a later video, but basically if, if you have, uh, let's say, you want to turn out a lot of bootstrap type templates. You can set up a, I'm sorry, a lot of bootstrap type code pens. Then you can set up a bootstrap template and reference that every time you want to create a new pen. That way you don't have to set up uh, your APIs and CDNs every time you are building a new bootstrap pen. So for the settings that we have, we'll go ahead and hit save and close. And up here, now that we've saved it, we get a custom URL. And this custom URL is ready to share, okay? This part here, along with it being tucked inside of my account, uh, gives it the uniqueness that you need to uh, share it anywhere. Within change view, we have the option of uh, viewing it in details mode or full page view. Full page view simply sets it up so that we can, oh, looks like I need to verify my email address before I can go full page. So bear with me a moment, I'll be right back. And I have gone in and verified my email address and now we can view this in uh, full page mode. So let's return to the editor mode. And when you're in editor mode, you have the option of where these code windows will display. Uh, you can have them display at the top on the right. I prefer them on the left. Okay, and now we can start uh, making a pen. So we are just going to create a simple pen here. I'm going to add a header, and this is Emmet compatible. So if you are accustomed to using Emmet, uh, you can use it the same way you would in your uh, local browser or your local. Uh, code editor, whether it's VS Code or Atom or Sublime. So let's go first code pen and then let's tab it out and that'll display um, that text there. And then we're also going to test the uh, JavaScript and CSS. So let's go ahead and just toss in a button in here. And I will jump down here to the CSS. Let's pretty this up a little bit. Uh, let's, we can add a simple font family. And as you can see, it updates live. And then you can, um, let's say, header h1, text align, center, and that will center your your header. And then you can also decorate the button. It does accept semantic colors as well as um, hex colors and RGB and RGBA. Um, let's go ahead and add some padding onto this. Okay, and then we'll jump down here into the JavaScript and we'll write a quick function. Okay, and then up here, we'll add the ID that we created down here called change. Oops. All right, 
now. Uh, I don't need to save this. It's automatically updating. And when I click the button, then we get the change that we we're looking for from that function. Now, as far as naming your pen goes, um, up here, there's a, a little pencil. If you click on that, it gives you the option to edit it. It's a good idea to name it exactly what it is. Uh, so let's say JavaScript function change text color on click and hit enter and it will automatically save that uh, save that title and it saves it as the page title as well and then as far as organizing your uh, created pens you can add to collection is one of the options down here so if you click this you have the option of searching your current collections or you can create a new collection so let's say you know this is a very simple uh, javascript function so let's say javascript 101 and create and create collection and add pen so now this pen will be added to this collection um, javascript 101 and then if you go back home and you go into your dashboard and into your collections, then you can come in here and you can see under JavaScript 101, you have your pen, at which point you can open it right back up and continue editing it. Now let's go back to the main pen screen here. And under your dashboard, you have some other ways that you can uh, search and locate your, your pens. Um, you can find all of your pens under here. Uh, you, as a free user, you have the option of creating up to one project, again, with the collections. And then you can, uh, if you have, you know, eventually you might have several hundred or several thousand pens, uh, you can come in here and perform specific keyword searches uh, or search by a tag. Now let's go through forking a pen. So if we go back to the home page here and let's say we um, we see a pen that we like. So let's say let's find a pen here. Let's take this one for example okay now i'm in the pen and i can see that it's by a, com a completely different user and if i click this button here fork it's automatically going to create a copy of that pen and it's going to put it into my own account and now i can come in here and i can play with um, obviously it looks like the fish here is animated uh, there's probably some keyframes in here somewhere. Um, I can toy around with those. I can change the colors. I can add elements to the scenery, to the background, and basically turn it into my own pen and share that. And if you go back here to the home page and I go back into my dashboard, now I will see that I have this pen has been forked into my account and I still have my original pen there. So finally, sharing, if we go into the pen, the particular pen that you want to share, all you have to do is copy this link and you can share that on any social network. And if you wait a few minutes after creating your pen, a screenshot will be generated of your pen. And when you share it, it will use that as kind of a screenshot or a thumbnail to show what your pen looks like and it might attract other users into clicking on it if you're sharing it on let's say twitter or facebook or instagram or pinterest or something like that i hope this video helped uh, helped you get into code pen and understand a little bit more about uh, social text editors as always please like and subscribe for more videos if you have any comments uh, please leave them down below 
and I will see you in the next video.